Hey everybody, today we are starting chapter five with section one, which is perpendicular and angle bisectors. We are gonna start with perpendicular bisectors, okay? A reminder that if I have a segment and at the midpoint, if I draw a line that is perpendicular through that point, that is a perpendicular bisector, okay? So this line right here is a perpendicular bisector, okay? It is perpendicular to the segment and it bisects it as well. So our perpendicular bisector theorem is we are given that we have a perpendicular bisector, okay? Then every point on this um, line, on that bisector, is equidistant from the endpoint. So what that means is that this distance AX and this distance XB are going to be the same. It doesn't matter where I put it. If I put a point here and I look at this, these two dotted lines are going to have the same distance. If I come all the way up here, these would have the same distance, okay? So whenever every single point on this line is the same distance from A as it is from B. Okay, the converse of that is that if we have a point that is the same distance from the endpoints of a segment, then that point lies on the perpendicular bisector. Okay, um, so if you have questions on that, go ahead and write that down. All right, so let's take a look at example one. I want to find each measure using that perpendicular bisector theorem and its converse. So if I look here, I know that line L here is the perpendicular bisector of segment XY. Here, these are congruent and it's perpendicular because we have a right angle. So that means that I know based on the theorem that these are congruent. I want to find the length of YW, which is gonna be the same as XW, so it is 7.3. And that is all there is to that. Nothing more complicated, okay? When I look here, okay, at BC, notice that A is the same distance from B as it is from C. That means that this point A is on the perpendicular bisector of segment BC. So that means that this piece here is going to be equal to this piece here. So BD is going to be 16. Well, if I want to find BC, I'm going to take 16 plus 16, and I'm going to get that BC is 32. All right, then when we look at C, again, I know that line L here is the perpendicular bisector because, again, I know that these are congruent, so that means I have a bisector. I've got my right angle to show perpendicular. Okay, so that means that R is going to be the same distance from Q as it is from P. So that means that these are congruent. So I can set 2N plus 9 equal to 7N minus 18. I'm going to start by subtracting 2N from both sides. I'm going to get 9 is equal to 5N minus 18. I'm going to add 18 to both sides, so I am going to get 27 is equal to 5n, and then when I divide both sides by 5, I'm going to get 27 over 5 is n. Just leave it like that for now, because um, we're going to go turn around and plug that in, because I want to find the length of PR, okay? So PR is 2 times 27 over 5, which is n, plus 9. All right, so we're going to get PR is equal to, multiplying this by 2, is going to be 54 over 5 plus 9. Um, and at this point, I'm going to go ahead and let you take this to a decimal. Um, cause 54 over five is going to be 10.8. And when we add that together, PR will be 19.8. A little wonky there. 
Okay, so if you have questions on that, go ahead and write that down now. Okay, now let's take a look at angle bisectors. Angle bisectors are going to have a similar concept as perpendicular bisectors. Um, so when we're looking here, I'm given the angle bisector for my angle bisector theorem. So remember, guys, that when we have an angle, if I bisect it, this is my angle bisector, and it's going to cut that angle into two congruent angles. It cuts that angle in half. Remember, bisect means cut in half, okay? So our angle bisector theorem, it means when I have an angle bisector, every point on that bisector is equidistant from the sides of the angle. One thing that I want to kind of highlight here is remember that distance between a point and a line is always the perpendicular. Okay, so from C, we drop the perpendicular to this side of the angle to get point A. From C here, we drop the perpendicular here. So these are going to be congruent according to my theorem. All right, my converse is if I have a point on a line that's in the middle of an angle, okay, and it is equidistant from the sides of the angle, then it is on the angle bisector. So even if I know this, like if I have an angle and I know that I have a point here and this is, pretend that's perpendicular, and this is perpendicular. If these are congruent, then I can take that point and the vertex and draw the bisector. Okay, so even if you don't see the ray, as long as you know the point is equidistant from the sides of the angle, then it is on the angle bisector and you can draw that in. All right, so if you have questions on that, go ahead and write that down. And let's take a look at example two here. All right, so I want to find all of my measures here. So with A, I have angle JKL. It is being bisected by ray JM, okay? That means that every point on this line is the same distance from both sides of the angle. It doesn't matter where I put that point. This one here is 12.8, which means that this is also 12.8. So LM is 12.8. All right, when we look at B, point D is the same distance from ray BA as it is from ray BC, which means it's going to bisect this angle. Now here, we're told that ABC is 112. So that means this whole angle is 112 degrees. So that means that to find the measure of angle ABD, which is just this one here, I'm gonna take that 112 and divide it by two so that the measure of angle ABD is 56 degrees. All right, and last one for this problem here is we are looking at the measure of angle TSU, which is TSU. So this angle right here is the one that I'm looking for. I know that UT is the same length as UR. So U is equidistant from the sides of this angle, which means that this angle here has been bisected. So that means that I can set 5Z plus 23 equal to 6Z plus 14. So I'm going to start by subtracting 5Z from both sides, and I'm going to get 23 equals z plus 14. If I subtract 14 from both sides, I'm going to get that 9 is equal to z. So now when I want the measure of angle TSU, I'm going to plug 9 in. So I'm going to do 5 times 9. I'm running out of room here. Hold on, let me slide over a little. Okay, 5 times 9 plus 23. All right, so 5 times 9 is 45, and 45 plus 23 
is 68, so it's going to be 68 degrees. All right. So if you have any questions on that, go ahead and write that down as well. And then what I would like for you to go ahead and do is pause the video and do these four problems on your own. All right. So pause your video and then we will come back in just a minute as soon as you're done and then check these answers. Okay, so let's take a look. Go ahead and take a second, check all of your answers. With 1A, we're given that L is the perpendicular bisector of this picture. So that means that these are congruent and we're told that EG is 14.6. Well, that means that GD is going to be the same. So GD will also be 14.6. Um, with B, we're given enough information to know that the G is equidistant from D and E with both of those numbers being 36.4. And the whole length D to E is 20.8. Well, if I want to find EF, I know that that is now, a, or the, I know that GF is now a bisector, okay, because those, because point G is equidistant from D and from F, or from E, excuse me. Um, so all I had to do is cut that in half to find EF. Over here, when we're looking at 2A, we're told that YW is going to bisect my angle XYZ, all right, and that WZ is 3.05, which means WX is also going to be 3.05 because, again, every point on your angle bisector is going to be equidistant from the sides of your angle. Um, and then when we look at 2B, we're given that uh, the measure of angle WYX, which is this one here in the corner, 63 degrees. And that WZ and WX are both 5.7. Um, so since W is equidistant from X and from Z, it is on the angle bisector. So that means that this angle here is also 63 degrees. Well, if I want the measure of angle XYZ, which is the whole thing, I'm going to double this one because there'll be two of them. So I'm going to multiply that 63 times 2 and get 126 degrees. So any questions you guys have, go ahead and write those down now, and we will take care of all of those in class. Hope you guys have a great day.